Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. My name is Moi for New Here. I hope you're having a gorgeous day wherever you are. It is pretty gloomy here today, so I thought I would just kind of get cozy and I am filming a quarantine favorite. It's kind of like a roundup of some things I've discovered during quarantine time, be that books, movies, podcasts, even my favorite beverages. My girl Nana filmed one of these a few weeks back and I really enjoyed it and Jenny from where I live filmed a quarantine favorite and it was super fun so I thought why not film my own and share some of my recommendations with you guys. First up, let's talk about books. One of the most frequent DMs I've been getting from you guys is about book recommendations. And I don't know, I feel like you think that I'm a bigger reader than I really am. Like I do read and I have studied English literature for the past three years, but I feel like a lot of my friends definitely read more than I do. But anyway, aside from that, I have definitely been reading more since I've been in quarantine. And it's actually been quite nice just having that time to read a lot of the books, which I don't know, I just wouldn't have picked up normally. So if you guys have been keeping on my vlogs, you know that I actually took an African literature seminar last semester and one of my favourite books which I read during that was Nervous Conditions by Tiziti Dangaremba. I hope I pronounced that right. She is a writer from Zimbabwe and this novel is just such a beautifully written coming of age novel about a young girl called Tambu who gets the opportunity to study at the missionary school instead of her brother. I found it really entertaining and easy to read and it's also such like a powerful insight into like the various layers of discrimination I guess because it tackles issues of race, class but then also like the female condition. A lot of it is based on the different experiences of the female characters. So yeah it was so interesting and I definitely recommend it. I think it's actually the first in a series of three books so I will have to get my hands on the other two. Another one of the books which I read for this module was The Wretched of the Earth by Franz Fanon. It is so interesting. It is a non-fiction book and he explores issues of race, colonialism and the effects of imperialism be that economic economically and psychologically. I think it's a really good contextual based novel for starting to educate yourself on colonialism so would definitely recommend. During quarantine I also discovered Ishiguro who is by all means not a new writer at all. I think he's like a gem of British writing. I can't believe I haven't read any of his books before but I read Never Let Me Go for the first time and then I also read a collection of his short stories and oh my gosh I love the way he writes so much. This book was amazing. I literally couldn't put it down once I started. You're just like trying to work out the context and like the background of what's happening the whole way throughout the novel and oh my gosh the ending whenever you figure out like what's happening is just it's so good. I don't want to spoil it. It's quite dystopian. I didn't realize that it was going to be like a dystopian-esque novel but it also explores like relationships and friendships and it's very beautifully written so 100% recommend. I'm sure a bunch of you have already read it, but this is my first time reading Ishiguro and I'm definitely going to pick up his other books. I also just finished this book today. It is called Memoirs of a Geisha. Gesh, geisha? Geisha. Geisha. Okay, it's Geisha. I literally just picked this up in Oxfam randomly, like I've never heard of it and it kind of just like looked really cool. Love the red spine. It is kind of like a fictionalized autobiography of this girl who gets sold into becoming a Geisha and I don't know, I just haven't really read a lot about Japan and this whole world. I find it like fascinating and I thought it was going to be really dense whenever I first started reading it but I just became hooked on her life and her story and just like all the stuff that was happening in kind of like post-war Japan and this whole world of being a geisha. It is written by a American male writer so I don't know how much of it I should take with like a grain of salt but I found it so so interesting and captivating but yeah I'm really glad that I stumbled across this and would definitely recommend. And the last book which I have to share is The Power of Now by Eckhart Tolle. I'm sure you've seen this everywhere. Um, I've been wanting to read it for so long now and I'm so glad that I picked it up. I don't really have much to say about this apart from you have to read this. I think it was really good reading it in quarantine and kind of in this like worldwide context because it focuses on the importance of the present and that's something I've definitely struggled with is overthinking the past or being so concerned about the future and this really helped with kind of grinding myself in the present and and yeah being more aware of conscious living and the importance of the time which we have right now. So let's move on to TV shows and movies which I've been watching in quarantine. First thing I want to talk about is the Studio Gilby movies. Um, 
I cannot believe I have never seen them ever in my whole entire life. Like, what was my childhood without Studio Gilby? But yeah, I've literally never seen any of their movies, so it was just so exciting watching some of them for the first time. I watched Spirited Away and Princess Mononoke, and I have the rest of them on my list on Netflix. I'm so excited, but they are just so beautiful and so magical. It kind of made me feel like I was a child again, and especially with everything that was going on and anytime I felt like super anxious with the current situation it just like transports you to another world and yeah I'm so excited to watch more of their movies. Earlier on in quarantine I binged the two seasons of Kingdom. It's on Netflix and I haven't really heard that many people talk about it. It is a South Korean kind of fantasy zombie period drama and oh my gosh it was just so fun and okay i don't like scary things at all like i hate horror movies i cannot watch horror movies but something about the zombies just like weren't really that scary i think i was really in that like apocalypse mood whenever quarantine started so that was fun and i'm definitely gonna dip my toe into k dramas and see what all the buzz is there so let me know some of your favorite k dramas down below because South Korea is doing a lot of big things at the minute. I also binged Outer Banks and Elite. Normal people, of course, like what is quarantine without talking about normal people? I mean, I go to Trinity, so it was like lovely seeing it on TV and so like beautifully presented. But I think the main TV quarantine highlight for me has been watching I May Destroy You by Michaela Cole. She is a fantastic writer and I also binged Chewing Gum whenever it went on Netflix like a week ago or two weeks ago so funny would highly recommend but this tv show is just amazing i haven't finished it yet i'm on a, like episode nine i think there are still like a few more episodes to come out she wrote i may destroy you after her own experiences with sexual assault but the whole show explores issues of consent in all the various like relationships and characters it is just so so brilliant and tender and heartbreaking and um of course please don't watch it if you're going to be triggered by scenes of sexual assault um, there's also a few scenes of self-harm. I think it is one of the best TV shows I've seen in a long time. It raises so many important questions and conversations about rape and rape culture and what it means to be a woman and also a person of colour and there are just so many intricately woven thoughts. Does that make any sense? It's just a very thought-provoking TV show. Um, would highly recommend. If it is too heavy for you though, I would also recommend her comedy, Chewing Gum, because that is just hilarious and yeah. Next up, we have everything which I've been listening to, be that music or podcast. You guys have been asking for some podcast recommendations, so I'm bringing you a few of my favorites. My number one podcast recommendation, of course, is The High Low by Dolly Alderton and Pandora Sykes. It is just so entertaining and funny and wonderfully curated. I love listening to their conversations because it kind of just reminds me of my friends from uni. I don't know, the two girls which I'm living with next year, Kath and Cassia, they just give me such like Pandora and Dolly Alderton vibes, which is so fun. They talk about aspects of culture and politics and the news, but then also like memes and just everything that's been happening in pop culture. It just feels like you're hanging out with them, which I love. I've also been religiously listening to We Bought a House by Claudia Slusky and Phineas. I love Claudia. I've been watching her YouTube videos since she was in like the blue room in Chicago and her whole journey through LA and stuff. I've been obsessed with her content at the minute in quarantine and with Phineas. I think they're the cutest couple ever. They started this podcast at the start of quarantine, which is pretty cool. And I just like love hearing their conversations. They're really like open and raw. And they also talk about like a lot of political issues, which is great. They are just so entertaining on the podcast and I think I'm just obsessed with their life. So they're great, would highly recommend. Two more podcasts which I've been loving is Spiritual Shit with Alea Lovely, I think that's her name. She is so interesting to listen to. I love her voice, very calming. And she does a lot of interviews with other people, so it's fascinating to get like different viewpoints on spirituality. I've also been obsessed with Rohini Elise's Acting My Age. I love Rohini so much. I've been following her on Instagram since she had like 20k maybe and she was living in new york and i don't know i was just like obsessed with her life and then she started doing youtube 
love her videos i love like seeing her life in i think it's washington and yeah she started a podcast recently and her whole vibe is just great she did an amazing one on the law of attraction and manifestation which i'd highly recommend and yeah love her so much rohini if you're watching because you're like my og hi i love you <laughs> and in terms of music i made a quarantine playlist a few months ago called mornings in quarantine and i've kind of just been adding all the songs which i've been loving recently to it i feel like it best encapsulates my music taste at the minute i've also been really getting into like soft korean r&b which i feel like it's super niche and yeah i never thought i would ever be listening to that kind of music but I love it so much, it's so like chill and relaxing and like good vibes, off on off crush, um, there's a few other artists on that playlist who I've been loving and yeah, would highly recommend, I feel like I should definitely learn Korean so I can like sing along more to the music but that's kind of what I've been listening to. I've also been loving this playlist called Energy Reset by Hitomi, we all know that I love Hitomi and this playlist is just like such good like morning vibes, I don't know, it's just like a whole mood whenever I put on this playlist, I feel like I'm ready to receive good things from the universe and to like put good vibes out there. So would highly recommend also okay so this is like a weird mashup kind of lifestyle category of just like some miscellaneous things which i've been loving first up we have my journal it is my trusty black notebook which you see all the time on my instagram and in my youtube videos this is by moleskin i think it is a5 hardcover and the pages are dotted which i really like i don't know i don't i don't really vibe with straight lines i can do squares but i think dots are like the perfect kind of journaling page because you can like write in straight lines but then you can also draw on it okay i'm getting like really off topic and then also the pen which i always use is a muji 0.38 i picked another one up in dublin because i was running out and they are my favorite pens i've been doing my like to-do list my lecture notes my like personal journaling all in this notebook which i've never really done before like i've never had one place to put everything down but i really like it because now this is like a whole product of my past like few months in one place i think there's something like quite satisfying about it and i I've also started doing morning pages which was inspired by Jen M. You don't have to write about anything in particular, it's more of like a stream of consciousness just dumping everything down onto paper and I don't know, it's been really fun to do and I quite like forcing myself to write every morning. It's been good for like my creative mind and also just starting each day with like fresh thoughts. My clothing essentials has been my dad's wardrobe. I have been living in his jumpers and t-shirts and hoodies because they are just so comfy and oversized and I am going to be stealing a lot whenever I move back down to Dublin. But yeah, I've been wearing a bunch of his stuff. Example A is this kind of fleecy sweater, which I love. I have also been living in my Brandy Melville sweatpants basically every day. They are just like the perfect grey sweatpant, so comfy and cozy and if it's too warm for sweatpants which it literally hasn't been in Ireland but I've been wearing my biker shorts which I literally just cut out of old leggings this was like the best quarantine discovery um I posted about it on my Instagram and they are just so cute and comfy and yeah would highly recommend doing that I think my biggest quarantine achievement was sewing this with jean inspired top in my thrift flip I love it so 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 much I think it is so cute and it turned out so well I've also been loving seeing you guys recreate it and you've been tagging me in your instagrams and posting on your stories you guys are so talented and really good at sewing the one thing that i'm like mostly shocked about is that you could actually like follow along i feel like i wasn't really filming a tutorial but you guys like recreated it perfectly from like basically zero good instructions so very proud of you very proud of me just like kudos to all of us for that so my quarantine beauty essentials has been these three items they are what i put on if i just like don't want to look like a toe that day um i do wear sunscreen every day this is the period one i've been loving it so much um but yeah glossier boy brow and the cloud pin and dusk have just been like my rider dies this is like the makeup which i'll use in any like instagram um, selfies or whatever on my story just kind of like fresh and dewy you can't go wrong with like a good brow and like a nice sun-kissed skin so yeah very simple but it just kind of makes me feel better in the mornings I thought it'd be fun to talk about my quarantine cocktail which I've been drinking literally every weekend it's the only thing I drink apart from coffee and water these days also wine to be fair I have been drinking a lot of wine but you guys know I love a good GNT. I am like a gin and tonic girl through and through so this has been the one which I've been making basically it's just a lot of ice 
fresh lime and then my favorite gin is the Gumpardo gin it's like an Irish one and I don't know it's like nicely botanical but like not too perfumey it's really nice really strong i've been mixing it with this rhubarb gin liqueur by a draw box and this is like 20 percent. i think you can like have it on its own but it really like elevates a good gin and tonic and honestly like a double shot of gin and then like a shot of gin liqueur the stronger the better guys you know and lastly i want to talk about some creators who i've been loving i feel like the content which i've been absorbing the most is social media like youtube and instagram and i haven't actually downloaded tiktok yet i downloaded it at the start of quarantine i tried to learn a dance and i failed because i cannot dance and i deleted it because I don't know there's just so many pretty girls on it i do watch tiktoks on like instagram and youtube but I don't know if I can bring myself to download it. Anyway, let's get into a few of the YouTubers who I've been loving. Long-term favorites, of course, Ashley from Best Dressed. How can we not talk about her? She is great, fantastic. I hope she's doing well in New York. I'm sending my love to her. My girl, Nana Florence, I love her videos. I love hearing her voice. I actually FaceTimed her this week, which was so fun and so cute, and I just like wanna be her friend so bad, so. Of course check her out i'm sure you guys already subscribed to her i've been loving margot lee and jen im's quarantine content oh my gosh jen im's like what i eat in a day or what i eat in a week have just been like the best quality videos i've been watching in quarantine just so peaceful and relaxing and aesthetically pleasing and i need to have so many snacks at the ready whenever i watch those because they make me so hungry since quarantine started i've been religiously following jenny from where i live i just love the vibes that her content gives off and i've been following her from new york to colorado and i hope she's doing well and i love all the food she makes and the kind of vintagey vibe she has she just seems like such a cool part Person. and then over to instagram i'm just gonna look at my phone at a few accounts which i've been loving the nxc vintage just like great colorful content and the clothes that she has and the vintage items she finds stunning flame de pigal i think she's a french model slash artist and she is so so beautiful her paintings are also like really good sources of inspiration for me and i just like love her whole content in general also kind of cool i think she's a south korean youtuber and i've been watching her videos but her instagram content is just like so fun she just seems to have like a really cool life very aesthetic she seems kind of cool and i kind of want to be her friend but love her instagram i also love maxi hansen's instagram i've been watching her videos forever um she hasn't really been posting lately but she's been posting on instagram i've been like vicariously living through her like holiday in central Bay. oh my god it just like looked like a dream her instagram content is always top notch she is so gorgeous her style is like immaculate and yeah she seems like such an interesting person so that is all my quarantine recommendations i hope you enjoyed this video i'm sorry if it was like kind of long and rambly but i also feel like some of you guys really enjoy these like sit down videos so let me know down below and yeah don't forget to like and subscribe if you haven't already it truly really means the world i just want to say another quarantine favorite has definitely been doing youtube I know that sounds so cheesy but thank you guys so much for the continued support I can't believe that I am like doing this kind of as a job and also as a creative pursuit it truly is such a blessing and oh oh my god it's just so fun I hope you guys have a lovely day and a lovely week if you want to hear more from me you can follow me on Instagram and I will talk to you guys next week Bye. <laughs>